How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe and it is about that time of the year again where there's a new iOS major version update. This time we're getting iOS 14. So we're going to go over what I think are the best features, both big and small. We're not going to go over every single little micro change, but there are a lot of significant features, major ones that we can talk about that are pretty obvious. And then we can also talk about some more hidden features that you probably won't see mentioned anywhere else. So let's just get into it. Starting off with some of the really big obvious ones you probably already know about, we have the widgets on the home screen. This is something that Android has really had for ages, but finally iOS is now getting it. You can basically just long press on the home screen, then tap the little plus icon at the top, and then you'll see a bunch of different built-in, currently, widgets that you can add, and probably a lot more third-party ones as they get developed. Some of these have different sizes available, so you tap on it in the selection, and then it'll give you option to swipe through a few different sizes, like small, medium, large, and then you can simply drag them onto the home screen, it'll move all the icons out of the way, and then it will just be accessible from there. You also have the option to stack certain widgets. You just drag one onto the other, and then you can simply swipe through them continuously. And there's also an option if you go to edit the widget where it will automatically try and decide which one that it will show at the top, depending on maybe the time of day. For example, if you're just getting up, maybe it'll show your calendar, something like that. You can disable that though. Certain widgets are a little bit more customizable. You can change the settings in those by holding down on the widget and then hitting edit widget and then that'll sometimes bring up some options. All right, next up we have the app library. So no longer is it required to have every single app icon on all your home screen pages. Now there's a new app library which you can access by swiping all the way to the right hand page. It's now the app library and every single app you install on the phone will be in here. And you can also remove apps from other pages on your home screen without actually deleting the app and uninstalling it, you have the option to move it to the app library. Now in the app library, you'll notice there's a bunch of different categories. These are not changeable. So every app has a preset category from the app store and that's it. You can't change that. And to expand all the apps in a certain category, you just tap the bottom right of the four icons and that'll bring up all of them. You also now have the ability to choose whether or not newly installed apps will go on the home screen like default or just by default go to the app library and never show up on the home screen. And then if you do want it to show up on the home screen, you can simply drag it out of the app library onto whatever page you want. And also in terms of home page management, you can now actually hide entire pages of app icons. So if you know, oh, these are all apps that I barely use, I just want them to show up in the app library, you can hold down on the bottom dots and then that'll bring up a bunch of pages. You simply uncheck it and it will hide those. You can tap it again to bring it back if you want later. But there is no way to rearrange these pages, but I hope they add that feature because that would kind of make sense. All right, the feature next up I really like, and this is compact calling banners and compact Siri. So now when you get a phone call, it no longer takes up the entire screen. It'll simply show a banner at the top with who's calling and the option to answer or deny. This is so much better, I think, in my opinion. And also for Siri, when you hold down the Siri button, it will just show a little floating icon at the bottom to show that it's activated. And then if you ask it something, it'll show the answer at the top. If you're getting a call, you can still actually swipe down from the banner to show the full page thing like it was before. And you also have the option for whether or not you want this feature to be active. So you can make it go back to taking up the entire screen if you want, but by default, it's just the banner now, which I think is great. Here's one that I am really a fan of, and it is picture in picture, at least in videos in Safari. So basically, if you're watching a video in Safari, if you make it full screen, there will now be a new icon near the top, which is the picture in picture icon you can tap, and now you can basically keep that video playing no matter what app you're using. You can drag it around to any of the four corners. You can't really control exactly where it stays. It has to be in one of the four corners. And also, if you want to just kind of play the audio, you can actually swipe the video off to the side. It'll show a little arrow to show that it's there and you won't see the video, but the audio will keep playing. If you want, you can also double tap on the video to expand it or make it smaller again. So you can control a little bit of the size there. Unfortunately, this feature is not available yet in the native YouTube app, I'd assume they're going to add that feature because it seems like it would just make sense completely, but that is not available yet. Just be aware of that if you want to use picture in picture on YouTube, you have to go to the YouTube Safari site. All right, moving on, we have a bunch of new features in messages, which I'm a huge fan of. So first of all, we have inline replies. So basically, if you hold down on a specific chat message, you can then hit reply and there will be a new interface when you 
hit enter and send it to show that you replied to a specific chat message in the past. So that's just gonna be useful if you want to reply to something way in the past or there's multiple group chats going on in the same time in the same conversation. Also, I noticed if you have multiple replies in a single thread, there will be a, another icon, which is like a curly Q type line. And that just shows that all of the messages that are embraced by that curly Q are part of the same inline thread. And then if you tap on any of the messages in an inline reply thread, it'll actually just bring it up and show that entire thread. Another new feature is you can now pin conversations to the top of messages, the list of conversations, and it'll show the circle icon for that chat or whatever. Another feature is you can now change the icon for a group chat. So you can simply just edit the group chat, hit edit photo, and now that icon will show in the middle around all little circles for everyone in the group chat, and you can set it to whatever you want. And finally, for messages, you can now tag people in conversations. So basically, if you type out their contact name, it'll turn gray if it detects it, and then you tap on it, and then you can tag that person in that message. This is probably good for bigger group chats because I believe if you tag someone, they get a special type of notification that they were tagged. And I believe there's also a way to set group conversations to only notify you if you're actually tagged in the conversation instead of showing you a notification for every single group chat message. So this could come in handy. All right, moving on, we have a bunch of different privacy features which I am really liking. First of all, you have a new recording indicator for both the camera and the microphone. It'll show up as a dot at the top to show you whether one of these is active. So it's basically green, meaning the camera is active, and orange if the microphone is active from some app. And if you swipe down from the top to bring down the control center, it'll actually show you which app is doing that. And also it'll even show you if an app was recently recording. So maybe if it only did it for a second, or maybe you weren't looking at it, it'll keep showing it as recently when you swipe down. So this is definitely gonna be good if you're kind of suspicious of certain apps and you notice that it's recording a lot of microphone activity or camera activity when you don't think it should be or you're not using it that way, then you can go into the privacy settings for that individual app and restrict that permission so it can't do that. One feature in the App Store that's actually coming later this year is apparently it'll be able to show you what permissions an app is going to require before you even download the app, which I think is great because this way you can say, oh, this calculator app is gonna require that I I give access to all my photos and phone calls and stuff like that. This looks like a scam, whatever. So you can kind of judge how the app is gonna be using permissions before you ever download it from the App Store. Another feature I love is the ability to only give an app an approximate location for you. So basically, if it requests permission for your location, you can either choose between precise or approximate so that you won't have to give it your exact location if it's not necessary. So again, this is good for apps that might legitimately want to know what area you're from, but you don't exactly want them to know exactly where you live, that sort of thing. So you can choose this when the permission request pops up initially, or you can go into the app settings in the settings app and then change it from there and just unselect precise location. And finally, for privacy features, I really like this one. You now have the option to only give permission for apps to see certain photos in your photo library, because if you didn't know, if you give an app permission to view your photos, they will always have access to view all of your photos at any time, even ones that you're not selecting. So it's not like you choose, okay, upload this photo to Instagram or this photo to TikTok. They can basically analyze every single photo on your phone. And maybe you don't want them doing that if you don't really trust the app. So basically you just hit select photos and then you can actually individually check which ones you're going to pick and then they'll only be able to see those photos and get them from the library. All right, up next, this one is gonna make a lot of people happy. You'll now have the ability to change the default web browser and mail apps. So by default, it's either the mail app or Safari, but you can now change that by going to the settings app and then looking for any, for example, web browser like Chrome or Firefox, and then go into that setting, look for default browser, and then in there you can choose any default app to change to. Same idea for the mail app, you go to any third party mail app, for example, Outlook in the settings, then go to default mail app, and then choose any of them there. In Apple Maps, you now have some new features, including the ability to get cycling directions. So if you're a biker, this is gonna be really useful. And also if you have an electric car, you'll now have the ability to plan electric car routes based around known electric car charging stations. So if you're on a big long road trip and you're not a Tesla user or something, you can now make it much easier to plan out these routes. Next up, there's an entire new native translation app from Apple. This is pretty cool. So basically it works how you expect. You choose the language you wanna to go to and from, and you can either type it in or talk to it 
through the microphone. And there's also some privacy oriented features, for example, a conversation mode where if you're talking with someone and translating it, it'll do all the translation on the device. So it doesn't get sent to any servers. So if you're paranoid about it, leaking all your conversations to anyone, then you know that it's happening just on the device. All right, next up, we have several Safari features. So speaking of translation, now Safari has the ability to translate web pages from several languages into English and vice versa. So to do this, all you do is tap the little AA icon at the top left, and then it'll say translate to whatever language. And this will depend on your default keyboards. So for example, I added Russian as a second keyboard. And when I'm on an English website, it gives me the option to translate to Russian because that's one of my keyboards that I have set active. But if you're on a website that's not in English, like German or something, then you should be able to see translate to English in that same area. Another cool feature in that little AA menu is the privacy report. So you tap that, go to privacy report, and it'll actually tell you different trackers that websites have had and it'll show you how many on each site. So you can see which ones are blocked and whether or not you want to trust a website, more of just kind of a informational curiosity thing. I don't know how much of this is actionable if you would have to just decide not to go on those sites anymore, but still good to know. And also if you store passwords in Safari, you'll now get a notification if that password was detected in password breaches, which is really good, especially if you use several passwords the same on different websites, which you're not supposed to do. So basically you can access this by going to the settings app, then pass passwords and then security recommendations and it'll tell you whether or not any of your saved passwords appear in data breaches that are known. One cool feature having to do with AirPods is now AirPods and AirPods Pro will now have the ability to automatically switch between devices. So if you have an iPad and an iPhone like I do, now theoretically if you go from using one to the other, it'll automatically switch the audio to play from the one you're actively using. The next cool feature to talk about are called app clips. So this is basically the ability for stores, restaurants, whatever, to create miniature versions of apps that don't have to be actually installed from the app store, but are easily accessible by like scanning a QR code or an NFC tag. So say for example, you go into a restaurant and they have a app that you can use to natively download and order things from, but you can alternatively now theoretically maybe scan a QR code, it'll pop up the app clip, which will still allow you to order from their menu without having to go and download the full app and sign up and all that stuff. So that's probably something we'll see slowly roll out over time. All right, so now finally, let's get in some really cool, more hidden features that you might not see a lot of places talking about. So first of all, we have the back tap shortcut, which basically lets you tap on the back of the phone either two or three times and it'll activate a certain shortcut. So basically you go to settings, accessibility, touch, back tap, and then go into either double or triple tap. And here you'll have the option to set it to one of many system actions or also Siri shortcuts, for example, the Google Assistant. So if you like Siri, but you'd rather use the Google Assistant, you can now set it to like double or triple tap the back firmly and it will just open up the Google Assistant to prompt you instead. But again, you can set this to any number of the shortcuts you see or sh Siri shortcuts that you set custom. Another really cool feature is the ability to long press the back button in menus now and it'll show you multiple steps back which one you might wanna to go to, and you can automatically go back to that directly. So if you've navigated into a million different menus, now you can just hold down that back button and then automatically go all the way back to the beginning without having to repeatedly hit the back button. All right, the next feature is in the camera settings and it's mirrored selfie camera pictures. So basically by default, if you're looking at the selfie cam, it'll basically show a mirrored image where if you raise your right hand, you'll notice that the same side is raising its hand just like it would in a mirror. But you have to remember that this is not a true image of what other people see. So therefore, when you go to take the picture, it'll actually flip it for the final result, which is the true look of what you look like. However, with the setting, you can now choose it to keep the mirrored photo just as you see on the screen before it actually takes the photo. So if you prefer what you see is what you get kind of thing, you can do that, but just keep in mind, that's not what other people are gonna actually see you if they look at that picture. Another new feature in the Photos app, which is useful, is the ability to add captions. So basically, if you're looking at a photo, you swipe up, and now you'll have a little field to add a caption, and that text is also searchable, so you can search for it and find it later. Could be really useful. Another cool privacy feature is your iPhone will now effectively spoof your so-called Mac address or local or hardware address. So if you connect to Wi-Fi, if you go into the settings and then that, for that Wi-Fi network, you'll now have the option by default, actually it'll be on to set a private 
MAC address. And the idea, I guess, is that if you connect to multiple different Wi-Fi networks, now it won't know exactly what your real one is, so they can't track where your device has been if they have that capability. So you can actually disable this. I actually keep it disabled on my home network because I want to be able to keep track of that and just have it labeled as one thing in the router settings, but it's probably something good to keep when you're just out and about. And finally, this one is really cool. Your iPhone is now capable of displaying up to 4K or more high resolution videos in the YouTube native app. So this should just be automatic. If you look at a video that is higher than 1080p, you'll have the option to view it that way. And even though the screen of your iPhone might not be that high resolution, you'll still get the higher bit rate and it might also be more useful for iPads, for example. So yeah, those are just some of the really cool new features in iOS 14 I wanted to talk about. If I missed any really big ones, let me know down in the comments and also be sure to check down there because someone might've talked about one that I didn't talk about. If you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I talk about how you can make a QR code that will allow you to automatically connect to your Wi-Fi. This will be great if you have guests over, they can just scan that QR code and automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network. So check that video out and I'll see you in the next video.